and welcome to our scene on Rheumatoid Arthritis, represented by this room over here where we see a lot of art. This is the Room of Art. Room of Art for Rheumatoid Arthritis. In this scene, we're going to talk about the different characteristics of Rheumatoid Arthritis. Inside the room, as we'll see, we'll talk about the pathophysiology of the disease, as well as its symptoms seen in a patient with this disease. Outside, over here, we're going to talk about extra articular manifestations of this disease, and then we're going to end off the scene with treatment, represented by what's going on on top of the room over here. So let's begin. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. So the first work of art that we're going to look at is actually a photograph over here. We see a photograph of an astronaut in his auto on the moon. He likes to drive on the moon. The auto on the moon reminds us of autoimmune, autoimmune, which reminds us that rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, which leads to an inflammatory condition that affects the joints as well as other organ systems. So what happens is that certain proteins in the body, such as collagen type 2, for whatever reason, have their arginine amino acids converted to citrulline. This, of course, changes the way they look, and the body no longer looks at them as self, it looks at them as foreign, and it sets off an autoimmune, as I mentioned, an autoimmune inflammatory process against them. T cells come along, of course, and they stimulate B cells to produce antibodies against these proteins. T cells themselves also secrete cytokines, which recruit macrophages, and the macrophages secrete cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha and IL-1. These inflammatory cytokines stimulate synovial cells, which leads to the formation of a panis. A panis is proliferative granulation tissue. To remember this panis, we have this pan over here. And if you take a look inside the pan, you'll see this box of tissues over here that looks really grainy. The grainy tissues for granulation tissue. This panis actually erodes cartilage and bone, which is the primary reason why rheumatoid arthritis involves erosion of the joints. Phew, that was a lot. Everything after this is fun and easy. So let's talk about it. So here we have a painting that one of the artists drew, and thankfully for us, it is actually labeled. This is a picture of a presentation of a patient whose hand has been affected by chronic rheumatoid arthritis. Let's talk about it. The first thing we note is the ulnar deviation of the fingers over here at the metacarpophalangeal joints. And we notice over here the swan neck deformity of the fingers. And if you forget that, we'll note this sculpture that one of the artists made of this swan, and we notice the long neck. This reminds us of swan neck deformity, in which there's hyperextension of the PIP, proximal interphalangeal joint. We also note that there is this fire over here by the joints, which reminds us of the swelling and inflammation that presents in the joints. Just to point out, by the way, that this pain and swelling improves with use, which separates it from osteoarthritis, which improves with rest. But anyway, we note over here that there's another artist who tried to sculpt a spine, a skull with the spine. And we note the cervical subluxation over here, which reminds us of cervical subluxation seen in some patients with rheumatoid arthritis. We also note the boutonniere deformity over here, but let's take a look at a different artist's work to get a better picture of this. Here we go. Some artist drew another picture of the boutonniere deformity. Boutonniere deformity is almost the opposite of the swan neck deformity, where we see hyperflexion over here. And the boot that's floating up in the air over here reminds us of boutonniere. Boutonniere for boutonniere. Boutonniere deformity. You might have noticed, by the way, that, that the swan was actually sitting on top of this beautiful piece of art. This symmetric piece of art. This symmetric piece of art over here reminds us of the symmetric joint involvement seen in rheumatoid arthritis. That is, as the joints are affected, it occurs in a symmetric fashion across the body. Okay, things are going to start getting really fun over here. Let's take a look at this part of the scene. Here we note some risk factors of rheumatoid arthritis, the high yield risk factors. We note that there is this lady over here who's noticing the doctor at the door. This doctor at the door always has a halo on his head. Halo for HLA and doctor at the door for DR4. This doctor over here reminds us of HLA DR4, that rheumatoid arthritis is associated with the HLA subtype DR4. The lady herself reminds us of female, as females are more prone to rheumatoid arthritis, in a 3 to 1 female to male ratio. On top, we note this interesting sign. It doesn't say no smoking, it says yes smoking. This reminds us of smoking, which is associated with the development of rheumatoid arthritis. We note that this guy over here is holding two things. 
these two things are going to remind us of important markers of rheumatoid arthritis. Over here we note the more important marker. China's Communist Party. I guess this doctor over here loves China's Communist Party. China's Communist Party, or CCP. That a patient with rheumatoid arthritis will have the anti-CCP antibody. This is the most diagnostic marker for rheumatoid arthritis. In his other hand, he has this small referee. Referee for RF, rheumatoid factor. 80% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis have the R factor, the rheumatoid factor, which is an IgM antibody that targets the IgG at the FC region. He's dropping this referee over here just to remind us that it's not as diagnostic as, as the anti-CCP. Okay, we weren't talking about symptoms in this part of the scene, but just to point out, we note the Baker's cyst that we see over here on her, which reminds us of the Baker's cyst, which develops in many patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And by the way, we note this beautiful piece of artwork on the floor over here on this rug. In this work of art, we notice the histologic picture of the autoimmune inflammation seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, now let's go outside to take a look at extra articular manifestations in a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Over here we see several people who are really scared. I don't know what they're scared about. You know what? Maybe they actually really sad because they weren't allowed into the art room over here. Whatever it is, these characters over here are going to remind us of the extra articular manifestations associated with rheumatoid arthritis. The first thing we note over here is Santa. Santa in his felty chair. And he is saying, Oh, I love my new felty chair. He loves his new felty chair. Felty reminds us of felty syndrome, which includes splenomegaly, neutropenia, and anemia of chronic disease. Then we note on top over here, we notice the lungs that are very sad, which reminds us of the interstitial lung disease and the pleuritis. We also note that there is this pair over here on top of the sad heart. The pair with the heart, that's sad, for pericarditis. By the way, you might have noticed that Santa over here has these nodules, rheumatoid nodules. Under the microscope, these rheumatoid nodules are characterized by fibrinoid necrosis with palisading histiocytes. And these develop in the subcutaneous tissue and may actually develop in the lungs in a condition known as Kaplan syndrome, which also involves pneumoconiosis. Finally, we get to treatment. Let's talk about treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So here we see N that is sad. The N is very sad, I guess because there is this dinosaur, which we'll describe in a minute, coming to attack him. The N that's sad for NSAID. NSAIDs may be used to treat acute flares in rheumatoid arthritis. We notice that this N that's sad has this quarter that is glued to him, the glued quarter for glucocorticoids. Then we note the metal T-Rex over here. This is a metal T-Rex, metal T-Rex for methotrexate methotrexate, as well as other disease-modifying agents, such as sulfasalazine, may be used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. We also note the elephant inside the tuna fish can. We'll call this the tuna fish elephant. Tuna fish elephant for TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha inhibitors, such as adalimumab, as well as other biologic agents, may be used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on rheumatoid arthritis. Take care.